All right. Um, so uh, I'm trying to think of the politics. I think this was Ronald Reagan uh, who once said uh, that he wanted a, a one-handed economist. Um, Truman. 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 That's right. Thank you very much. Harry Truman. Good. That was a quiz. That was a test. Good. You go to the head of the class. Uh, right. Uh, Harry Truman. I want a, I want a one-handed economist. And uh, uh, I think today I'm, I'm going to kind of be the two-handed economist uh, a little bit. So I, I'll probably say something that makes uh, all of you unhappy and probably say something that make all of you happy uh, regardless of your political affiliation. But uh, uh, so uh, we're taking on this question and, and there are lots of claims about school choice. Uh, choice uh, equals opportunity. Uh, school choice works. Uh, of course, this question kind of raises some other questions about uh, for whom and um, what does work mean. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, we have uh, we ask people what they think about it, and it improves, uh, makes higher quality schools. And, and many people have been saying that kind of thing already. Um, uh, and that's great, right? uh, and they all might be true. Uh, but there's something missing. And it's this question that the others have alluded to already, and that's this question about economic growth. Right? Uh, can this be a catalyst for a change in our economic development of municipalities, counties, or states? Right? Uh, this question is not a common question we hear asked in the school choice literature. And, and I know Dr. Danielson is going to be uh, talking about this in a moment. Um, uh, and he's going to recover basically the extant literature. Um, but this uh, question about the relationship is, uh, is a relatively new idea. Uh, these studies have come out very recently, and there are very few of them. Uh, and so this uh, dearth of studies uh, means there's not a lot for us to go on. And uh, that proved, uh, um, proved to us quite quickly that we were in, in an enormous and very ambitious and quite complicated task. Uh, and so I'm going to share with you some findings uh, that we've, 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 we've come across, and uh, we'll see how this uh, Plans out, plays out. Um, so I understand there's some legislators in the room, and uh, um, so I'm going to make my plea maybe to uh, some legislators from my academic standpoint. Uh, if we can, you can help us out. But uh, I think the reason for the lack of studies in this area is the fact that data are so hard to come by with regard to economic development. I say economic development. I don't know how many people are in the room. Maybe a hundred or so, or at least. You know, 75, we come up with maybe 75 different answers for what we mean by economic growth. Uh, we measure it in a number of ways. Uh, it's calculated by state, by country, right, all kinds of ways of slicing and dicing this. Um, unfortunately, when you try to do things at a school district or municipality level, economic data are really hard to, to come by. And so uh, I guess that's my plea uh, here. Now, this lack of data, um, I had a, a wise professor at the University of Arkansas say, let's not, let's not have perfect be the enemy of good, right? Uh, so uh, we, it's a caveat, not a deal killer. Deal killer, we can still make some claims about uh, what, what, what's going on here. All right? uh, so the first, uh, first analysis, and I don't know if you have the paper, uh, if any of you have been able to read the paper, but I've reversed the way I'm discussing these. So this would be the second analysis in the paper. Uh, uh, but nonetheless, uh, the Wake Forest. And so this is this uh, interesting question about Wake. And so there's this interesting phenomenon of parental school choice growing in this area and economic uh, growth. Uh, and we kind of see that on the surface, and I'll show you that in a moment. And the question then becomes, OK, we see this in Wake, but, but is, there just, is that just Wake, or is there something else going on? Maybe it is school choice, and we should look around to other municipalities and see if similar things are happening there, right? And so um, we did. We, uh, that's what we did. Uh, and again, this is, this is one of the problems, right? Uh, we've only come up with four to, to, to compare to. Uh, and that's problematic for social science researchers. Uh, but nonetheless, here's what we did. We uh, found four municipalities, Holly Springs and Apex. Most of you are probably familiar with those as they're near the Raleigh area, right? Uh, Indian Trails outside of Charlotte, and then Mooresville in between Charlotte and uh, Statesville. And so this was our initial stab at it, right? And so what we did, and I know there's a lot of numbers out there and you can't see them, but uh, what, what we're interested in on this rega with regard to this slide basically is this first column under the 2,000. And what, you, what we wanted to do was try to find municipalities that were um, close uh, to uh, looking like Wake Forest without being Wake Forest. And so we matched on population, uh, race, age, and income, and we came fairly close. Um, the Raleigh, the 
Raleigh area municipalities are uh, quite a bit larger on the um, uh, income area. But um, we felt comfortable with, with choosing these, and then uh, we wanted to see the difference then basically of how these places um, changed with regard to, to school choice usage and how it changed with regard to a number of economic indicators, and we used uh, three of them. Okay. Uh, so, uh, first choice, uh, what's going on with school choice? I know a lot of numbers, but I'll focus you over to the right-hand column uh, to uh, try to make some sense. Right? Uh, so, here's a, here we have um, increases uh, showing from 2000 to 2012 in, in uh, total students and then broken out between traditional public schools, charter schools, and private schools. Uh, now you're saying, well, where's home, where are home schools? Uh, well, home schools are, 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 are still present, but they're not in the data. The uh, uh, data for home schools at the municipality level are nearly impossible to get. North Carolina has really good county level data with regard to homeschooling, and we use that in the second analysis. But for municipality level, we had to leave it out. So these numbers here are hitting a little low, I guess is uh, what I'm saying. Uh, so we see that uh, Wake Forest has had quite an increase even between 2000 and 2012. And as Bob already referred to, it's, um, I think, uh, over 22 or 23%. So, um, so we are comfortable with this. Um, however, this does uh, have con some concerns. But nonetheless, uh, so we looked at three areas, median income per capita income, and housing values. And of course, we look at Wake Forest and we see uh, quite, quite the, the whoppers. Right? A huge growth in all three areas from 2000 to 2012, uh, especially uh, when we compare those to, um, to the, where there was no charter school present um, uh, at all. However, <laughs> this was the Truman on the other hand kind of thing. Uh, on the other hand, right? Uh, if we look at if we look at municipalities excluding Wake Forest, uh, and we look at municipalities that had charter schools present, and we look at municipalities that didn't have a charter school present, we see the numbers are much closer. And in two cases, those that didn't have charter schools actually had a higher growth, uh, not enormously higher, but nonetheless higher. Uh, so that tells us that um, oh, something's going on in Wake, right? Uh, and so when we look at the charter school percentage total, we include Wake, and we look at the non-charter present, uh, we see quite a, quite a difference uh, with regard to um, to having choice, and it looks like that is associated with um, higher economic growth, at least measured by those three things. I'll go through this slide very quickly, simply because it's a graphical representation of basically what you just saw in the tables. Right? So uh, all you need to note is this first column being Wake in each of these, and the others being the control uh, municipalities. You see that the growth in the chart uh, is much higher for the, the Wake Forest uh, median income, per capita income, and the housing values. Uh, so uh, one issue there. Uh, we only have four observations, right? Uh, and we only have two years worth of data. And all that data came from uh, citydata.com. Uh, That's how we uh, got those uh, areas. And we only had 2000 and 2012. Again, getting it annually is very difficult at the municipality level. Uh, with only four observations and four control groups and only one, <laughs> one group of, uh, as, a, as a comparison, uh, we decided that we need to try to put some statistics to this and see if we can isolate this choice effect. Kind of thing. And so what we did is we, um, we did another analysis which allowed us to do some regression and some fancy statistical work. And we looked at the entire state of North Carolina and we did a regression analysis on it. And we got a variety of data in this case. Uh, we, we, we aggregated to the county. Uh, which was the lowest unit of analysis we could get, or the smallest unit of analysis we could get and still get uh, decent data. We had uh, choice per county, number of students in choice per county included homeschool, because uh, again, North Carolina has good homeschool data at the county level. Demographic variables uh, and per capita income. Um, and we'll talk about per capita income in a second. Uh, GDP, again, is not, which is the preferred measure of economic growth and, uh, and how the economy is doing isn't available at the county level annually. 
something. Uh, this would be good news if we did have such, a, such data, we would be able to uh, maybe put a little bit more uh, emphasis on this. Um, so we collected data from a variety of places. Uh, many of them you're probably familiar with. The Bureau of uh, Economic Analysis, uh, NCES, National Center for Education Statistics, uh, and then the uh, North Carolina Division of Non-Public Education. That's where the homeschool data uh, came from. We define choice basically as attending uh, something other than a traditional public school. Uh, so a charter school, a private school, or a home school. And then the data came from annual observations of the years from 2000 to 2012. And then we did this fancy statistical work where we regressed uh, basically uh, per capita income on a variety of these explanatory variables, one of which was choice, and to see if we have any kind of significant uh, showing up. So, um, I've, I've, I'm showing one table here. Uh, if you've had a look at the, at the paper, you'll see that there are multiple tables in the paper that look much like this one, and I'm only going to bore you with one of them right now. Uh, uh, just to show you that, um, just to say that we did this and sliced this and diced this a lot of different ways. Right? Uh, but this one is uh, one that might be uh, most telling. So, um, what we look at uh, here is Choice is our, our independent variable of interest. And, and what, what we would see is if this, thing, if this number is positive and statistically significant, then that means there seems to be a positive correlation between more choice. The more choice there is or the more students participating in choice, it seems like the higher the per capita income. Right? Uh, and so you say, wow, that number doesn't look like a lot of per capita income, like three cents. Uh, you can't do that. Uh, we had to transform our data to make it a better fit. Right, so when we, when we back it back out to make it actually turn into dollar signs, uh, we see that um, actually a taking a doubling of school choice, right, so doubling the, the uh, students uh, in school choice in per county results somewhere between $872 and $2,034 in per capita income. That's a positive uh, growth. Right? So, uh, I guess back to statistics class. Uh, we like to see the positive, or the we like to see the statistical significance being important, right? We like to see uh, statistical significance, but we need to make sure that we are clear that just because it's statistically significant doesn't necessarily mean we have a big magnitude effect, right? So uh, these numbers may actually be uh, uh, fairly uh, small, right? Nonetheless, significant. All right, I'm going to uh, talk to you a little bit about the limitations and, and uh, dispel a few of them and, and kind of give some caveats. Um, one, um, charter schools uh, have only been around for about, well, significantly been around for 13 years in, in North Carolina. They've been around a little longer than that, but, but um, to have any kind of impact. And that's about how far we went back uh, was to the uh, to year 2000. And the lack of that data severely uh, limited our ability to kind of, because we only had 13 years, and if, if, if education effects are truly important, then it might take longer for those education effects to actually take place and show up in per capita income and things like that. So it's possible that we just simply don't have enough years of observations yet uh, to make um, clear claims. Right? Um, the other thing is that we have a large number of counties in, in North Carolina that still uh, don't have uh, choice students or have very small numbers of choice students. Uh, and when we take that and we do some transformations, we actually lose those observations. And that could introduce a little bit of bias to some of our uh, results also. Right? So um, not the end of the world. Right? Um, despite these uh, limitations, we do seem to have uh, show a positive correlation between the number of students who are enrolled in st choice options and the economic development measured the way we measured economic development. Remember, we don't have the key one, which is uh, gross domestic product. Um, some other caveats. So I, I mentioned this one. Is capita, per capita income a good measure of economic development? It might not be. Again, GDP is uh, the best. Uh, and by using per capita income, we actually introduce maybe some other, um, other problems that I'll talk about in just a second. But um, these data are just not available. Right. Um, maybe uh, businesses, we could count the number of businesses. Maybe that would be a good way of, of determining economic growth. Uh, or we could look at housing values, which we've done in a variety of places. 
The problem with that is getting county level data standardized annually for that number of years for those data points is nearly impossible to get to. It would take uh, an enormous budget to collect such data and actually make uh, claims about it. So um, we're kind of, again, uh, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. Right. So uh, the other thing uh, that we should mention, and this is probably the big one, um, is, uh, like I said before, talking to some people, uh, uh, correlation doesn't necessarily mean causation. Right? So just because we have a positive correlation doesn't mean that school choice is actually causing higher growth. Uh, that could be the case, though. Right? We might be having the causation go that way, where choice leads to better educational outcomes, and the people who are wealthy are attracted to a particular area uh, because of the school system or because of the schools that are being offered. Because choice has driven up the quality of schools, people are locating there, wealthier people are locating there, and that's what we're capturing. So, and businesses are growing, and that could be the case. It also could be the case, though, that school choice is a normal good. Uh, in economic terms, what does that mean? Well, it means that maybe our incomes are growing, and as our incomes are growing, or people are moving into an area with higher incomes, and then they're saying, you know what? I kind of value this whole education thing. Maybe, I should, maybe we should get better schools and start better schools and start choice schools and those kinds of things. And so it could work the other way, where economic higher income is actually driving more choice. Right, so that's the, the big kind of caveat there. I'm going to end by saying, I don't know how much time I have. Uh, am, I, am I good? All right. Uh, I'm going to end by saying, though, that um, with that last caveat, just because we don't know that choice causes economic growth or vice versa, it doesn't mean that this research isn't important. Uh, it's important in getting this conversation off the ground because we really need to answer that question. Right? If indeed school choice does, is a tide that lifts all boats, to quote Carolyn Oxford, uh, if it indeed is, and these systemic effects are breeding and bringing in higher quality schools, then it's distinctly possible that we are growing our economy locally uh, at a much faster rate than we would have if we didn't have those choice schools. And answering that question uh, is fundamentally important.